Welcome back guys to another video. Let's talk about SPACs and more specifically, what kind of SPACs I have in my portfolio. If you guys wanna check these SPACs out, definitely do so because the downside risk is very low whereas the upside is very, very high. Going through why I choose these four SPACs and I currently have roughly $85,000 in these SPACs, roughly 21, 22,000 per SPAC, four SPACs and I love all four of them. So first things first, definitely check out the free Discord server, link in the description below. There's more than 22,000 members. It's one of the biggest financial Discord servers, mostly on stocks and options. There's a Patreon link below and also a Tesla channel, which is heavily edited. I'm sure you guys will like it in the description below as well. So the reason why I like SPACs so much, keep in mind a lot of the SPACs start off very, very small at like $10, okay? They sometimes go up to $10.50, $10.30. Now the cool thing about SPACs is even if you don't like the merger, you could always cash in your SPAC for $10. Keep in mind when you buy a SPAC stock, that money is stored in the treasury or in a bank account. If you guys don't want it, you can simply cash in your SPAC, it'll give you $10 per share plus a couple pennies of interest. This is why all the SPACs, no matter how bad they are, or how low of a volume, they always stay at roughly $10 because that's how much they're actually worth on paper. Like they have actual value. For example, TPGY, this stock shot all the way up to the moon. It was pretty low key and went all the way up to like $25. And the reason why I'm buying so many of these SPAC stocks and a lot of these are priced at the low tens is because one, the downside risk is very low. For example, AACQ, even if the SPAC goes to complete crap, it will probably dip to $10.05, which really isn't that much of a loss. It's only like, what, a 25 cents loss per share, something like that? It's really not that bad. But the upside potential is huge. If they get a really good merger in the coming couple of months, this SPAC could go from $10.39 to $12, $13, even $15. And that means I gain like 30, 50% by just holding it for the next two, three months. And sometimes when I get money in, let's say from the holidays or from work, instead of storing it in my Chase bank account, collecting dust, I store it in a $10 SPAC. It's just as good as a savings account, but you have a chance of your stock spiking up. This is why, for example, I bought SEAH. Because it's $10 and two cents, there's very, very down, low downside and there's a very high upside. So let's talk about why I choose these SPACs. First thing is Fusion. I bought FUSE because of a few things. Now, all four of these SPACs do not have mergers. Thus, the starting price of entry of buying them are super low, and also the price is very low as well. I typically don't like to buy SPACs that already have mergers. I like to buy SPACs that don't have mergers, so when they do have mergers, they go all the way up. And pretty much like 95, 98% of all SPACs do get mergers, especially the ones with good name brands. Keep in mind, Fuse, the management team is incredible. One of the people in the management team literally created the ETF SPY. They have several executives and higher ups of Spider, which is creator of the Spider ETF SPY, which is the most widely traded ETF in the world and was the first ever created ETF pretty much in history. Okay. So Fuse, the reason why I bought some is because SoFi at this current moment is in talks with SPACs about going public. Now, other major companies that are private that might go with SPACs include Acorn and Coinbase. Stripe is not gonna be going public. They said that multiple times. So SoFi is already confirmed that they want to go public with a SPAC. Coinbase and Acorn are just simply rumors at this current moment. Fusion, because their management team is so heavily finance-based, what better SPAC to merge with than with Fuse? I mean, you got the dude that made SPY ETF. Like you want to be having your SPAC go with another FinTech or banking stock or company. And I feel like Fuse might have a really big chance of going with SoFi because Fuse actually has a pretty decent amount of money and it's a pretty big and fat SPAC. So this is why I choose Fuse. Next up is Sports Entertainment, S-E-A-H. 
Now, this one's a little bit unique because this one also has not announced a merger target, but it will be in the sports entertainment industry. Now, this SPAC is roughly $400 million. It's a really, really big SPAC, very similar to FUSC. I don't pick SPACs that are less than $200 million because the SPACs that are like $60, $80 million in weight, they usually merge with really crappy companies. Like, for example, convenience stores. I mean, convenience stores are cool, but those aren't like tech heavy companies and those won't grow. So, SEAH is pretty important because of the management team. And the reason why I'm so heavily involved in talking about the management teams is because, let's say, the management team is mostly tech focused, fintech. They most likely 99% of the chance merge with a fintech company. If the management team is mostly clean energy, they most likely will merge with an electric car company. This has happened multiple times. The management of SEAH include Eric Grubman, which was previously executive vice president of the NFL. That's pretty big, and also a partner at Goldman Sachs and an officer in the Navy. Second dude in the management team that's very important is John Collins, who was previously chief operating officer of the NHL, CEO of the Cleveland Browns, and a senior executive at the NFL. This is pretty big news, and they most likely will be merging with big companies in the sports industry, either in the sports betting industry or in the sports industry in general. Everyone's going pretty crazy because it's a pretty big size SPAC, and they may be merging with Sports Radar, which would definitely send the stock flying high. This is why I got to Sports Entertainment, and once again, come on guys, this is like a $10.02 SPAC. It's super cheap. And very, very low downside. Like, what? I'm going to lose three cents per share? It's really not that bad. It could only go up from this point when it gets more hype. And the third SPAC I'm getting is AACQ. This is also pretty important because this is a pretty big stock. This is $750 million and it's most likely to be fintech. Remember SoFi? Well, one of the few SPACs that are most likely competing for SoFi will be Fuse and AAMC. So why not get both exposures and one of them may actually get SoFi and if they do, they will spike up enormously. Keep in mind that this is managed by the CEO of WorldPay, which is an extremely big fintech company. And guess what? It was bought out for $35 billion, which is pretty big. So yes, AACQ, I think it's a phenomenal company, good management team, and I wouldn't mind it too much. And also, last but not least is ACTC. Not a lot of news about this but it is heavily in clean energy, and recently the volume has been increasing. Call me crazy, but volume is super important. When you see the volume slowly go up, means it's getting more and more momentum. I think ACTC might announce a merger sometime in the next two months, and if it does, if it's like a charging company or a battery company, it's gonna spike all the way up. This is mostly gonna be focused on clean energy, so it's most likely battery or charging related, and we all know what happened to TPGY, these guys went up like 137% after announcing that they're merging with EV Box, which is a charging company. So yeah, this is why I got ACTC. Now, call me crazy here. You may be wondering, hey, MG, why are you buying all these SPACs? Like, they don't really move that much. The thing is, usually every single week, they go up roughly 1% to 5%, okay? And I just buy it. I just park my money there. I just have some fun with the SPAC. Now, I usually play with a more you know playful account to spice things up. Like I have a Robinhood account to keep myself interested. I usually just play around my Robinhood account. I just, you know, mess around, buy calls, buy puts, and just swing trade. But for my TD Ameritrade account, this is kind of like my savings. So I usually buy something very, very cheap. This is a very smart move if you're patient. Now keep in mind that most likely Fuse and AACQ might announce a merger within one month or two months. ACTC probably within three months, SEAH, probably within three months as well. But my current focus is on AACQ and FUSE because currently FUSE, a few days ago, someone submitted a 244,000 stock order. They wanted to buy that during an afternoon process. It was pretty crazy. That's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Comment below. This is my SPAC portfolio. Also, once again, if I want something to spice things up, I play around my Robinhood portfolio. If you guys want to see my trades on Robinhood, Definitely check out the Patreon link below. I post all my trades live time, and I'm currently up roughly 448% in the past three months. So definitely check it out. A lot of my trades 
and a lot of the trades from the mods and admins usually win. We're all pretty decent traders. If you want to copy our trades and get some alerts, definitely check out the Patreon link below. It's like the price of like two Chipotle burritos. It's really not that much. Thanks for watching.